ahead just a moment. Our kind Heavenly Father, we are grateful to Thee, the Almighty God, for giving us the privilege to come together again, assembling ourselves to worship Thee in spirit and in truth. And, O oh God, we pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will take the Word and will give it to every heart just as we have need. Save the lost and bring back to the fold the wandering and heal the sick. And we'll give thee the praise, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. We are trusting God for great things this week and the coming week, and trying now by the help of the Lord to just speak to you the best that I can under difficult. I've got a bad throat. Uh, last week I was in uh, Minneapolis, or week before last rather, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it was around zero to ten below, and, and coming out of the building real hot, well, then I would, uh, the wind would hit me, and I developed, I don't know whether a strained throat or whether I have a little cold. And then another thing has kind of slowed me up. I'm getting old and decrepit, I suppose. I had a tooth to come out in front, and they had to put a wire on it, a, a store tooth to hold it in. And in that, I, my tongue hits the wire and I'm, it slowed me up a bit. <laughs> but you will bear with me, I'm sure. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Oh, it's such a privilege to talk about the Lord Jesus and to worship Him and to come together with this fine group of men, as I just learned today that there's some 22 churches in sponsor of this meeting. And I am certainly grateful to this ministerial group of Phoenix, Arizona, for inviting us to your lovely city. And I am sure that in here and coming, I have come to do good and to everything that I can to help to make it a better, or not a better, yes, a better, a better uh, situation, a better, a better flow of the Spirit. And the word, the thing that I'm trying to say is this, a full cooperation among all the churches of the living God. That is one of the greatest things. Now, this week, I am trying to put my time in preaching uh, to the, uh, for own healing. And next week, if the Lord willing, I want to preach on a greater healing, a healing in a higher standard. That's the healing of the body of the Lord Jesus his broken body on the Word and us together as brethren and how that the fellowship of the great church of the living God, the Lord willing, of course we'll be praying for the sick just the same, but this week I'm trying to hold on the subject of physical healing. And if God willing, either tomorrow night or Sunday night, I want to bring the people to the platform and pray for them just as they come, without the discernment. A few weeks ago, I was in Lima, Ohio, and a Mr. Vail, Dr. Lee Vail, great man in the Baptist Association, and he come to the platform and he said to me, I uh, beg your pardon, he came to my motel room and said, Brother Branham, when I come to your meeting over in Vancouver, 
British Columbia long ago, I noticed that you would just stop the people when they needed to be stopped. See? Those who had sinned and done things wrong under the discernment, you picked it up. The rest of them you prayed and said, I stand at the meeting and I never seen one person come across the platform for what was helped by prayer while you were praying. So I just turned and had a night of that. And you know, the Lord Jesus just worked so wonderfully with us. The very first woman come to the platform had braces on, on her back. And now you have to be very careful in dealing with people, especially when you're asking them to do something that you know that they, unless you're led of the Lord to tell them, you better just keep still. Let it be based on their faith. But when you see and know that it's the Lord, then you can rest assured that it's going to be all right. That brace come off her back. She drop right over. See? So being by a vision, I told her to go take her braces off. The ladies took her back into a room, and she came to the platform waving those braces and glorifying God. And down the line, a little farther down, there was a lady come who had a lump sticking out on her neck in here. And before the thousands of people, I just put my hand on the lump and began to pray for her. Now, I know that this may sound strange to people, but something felt like it slipped under my hand. And when I took my hand off of the woman's throat, before those thousands of people, there, that growth had disappeared right before the audience. Now, anyone that's mentally right would know that God had to do that. There had to be a miracle performed. We want to have that type of line, the Lord willing, just testing our faith to God's promise in a few nights. Now, tonight, we want to read some out of the Word of God. And uh, the 19th chapter of the book of St. Luke, we read this. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come, he asked him, saying, What will thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now we have before us tonight one of the great instances in the ministry of our Lord Jesus and a, a sign and a seal of his divine messiahship proving to the world that he was the Messiah. Our scene starts tonight at the gates of Jericho. As you go in at the north side of the gate, perhaps, coming down from Jerusalem, there was a beggar by the name of Barnabas, and he sat there begging as it was his, his way of making a living. And in those days there was many beggars. There was lepers. I often wondered what it must have been when Jesus was here. Of those massive sights. And I never fully could understand it until I come from India. Where we would find laying on the streets lepers, no hands, no ears, and just all kinds of massive 
storms of sickness and affliction. And at night time when they would gather up the dead bodies on the street, would take them over to a great cellar in there of some kind and dispose of their bodies. No John 14 there. Just dump them in and let them go. Must have been something like the sights of Jesus seen. And so many beggars on the street, they had a hard time thriving because perhaps if a man had a coin or two that he could give, when he come into the city, the first one he met, he gave a coin that settled it for the day. And those beggars would hang around the gates, lepers, crippled, blind, afflicted, making their living by begging. And now, as we notice our subject tonight, this beggar was at the gate sign. Just, let's just imagine what was going through his mind, just for a short time. I can imagine as he sat there in the sunlight, when the warm rays of the Palestinian sun baking up on him, had drug himself off into the corner and was meditating, thinking. You know, there's something about getting alone to yourself. Many people never pray until they come to church. Many people think that the only place to pray is a church. But the Bible said for man to pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. And then when we get by ourselves, we'll usually pray different than what we would if we prayed in church. It's the secret prayer that Jesus spoke of saying, enter ye into a secret closet and close the door. And when you have did so, pray to your Father who sees in secret. And he that seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And when we are praying like that, there seems to be something to the prayer that takes all the hypocrisy out of it. It seems like that we get in a better connection with God to get alone. And there's been many times in my life, as perhaps in your life, that you just have to get alone once in a while with Jesus. I took my car and drove down the road and just studying after I got to the highway where it was free or off on some country road till I would become so filled with his mercies and goodness till I just stopped the car and helped the wheel and wept like a baby. But being alone, many times I've climbed up into the mountain where the man thought was with me I was going hunting. Go up there and sit down on a rock and just look up to the sky until it looked like that my whole innermost being become filled with something that you could just feel oh everything of the world seemed to pass away oh for those precious hours alone with God and it's there that when the greatest revelation and inspiration comes is when we're alone with God. We you take more time on that, I'm sure, that we would live a better life, more victorious life in Christ. And maybe Barney Mills had pulled off over in the warm sunshine after setting in the shadows of the morning to catch the first people coming by for a coin. But he got cold, and he goes out and sits down by the side of a wall and perhaps 
feeling his way along till he got to the warm sun and then leaning back. Let's see if we can break in on some of the thoughts that he perhaps had. Here he was maybe that day that no one had given him a coin. And maybe with the family at home. What would he do then? He had no capital to go on. And if he didn't get something his little family would do without. And his wife. And how that they would be without maybe all day long. And it's usually when we are right at the end of our senses that God usually steps in. Amen. Right at the end of our abilities. And as we see him sitting there in the warm sunshine, his mind goes back many, many years. To when a little Jewish boy on the Palestinian hills was flocking and running in the sh shock of black hair around his head, he could look up and see the stars at night and could see the pretty flowers blooming along the Jordan and to see the beautiful blue skies in the daytime. And one of his greatest thoughts was of a sweet old mother that he used to have that had passed on many years uh, before. And how she used to take him in the afternoon out on the porch that faced over towards the Jordan and when she would rock him and talk to him and tell him the Bible story as it used to be a custom of Jewish mothers to always drill in their child the Bible. It's too bad that we Gentiles don't do the same. But we turn our children to a Sunday school teacher 20 minutes on Sunday morning and I'm with the streets with the world the rest of the week. But what we need is to bring up the child in the way that it should go. And when it gets old, it will not depart from him. And how his mother used to drill into him to always love and respect Jehovah. And how he loved to hear the story of how that his people was brought out of Egypt. How great life followed. They followed this life and brought them out of Egypt to the promised land where they then dwell. How that they opened up the Red Sea. God did to let the children pass through. The brazen serpent and the many stories that was told him. And how one of his famous stories was, was the Shunammite woman. When she would, was given a baby by promise, and when the little baby had died at about 10 or 11 years old and was laid in the prophet's chamber, Elijah was a prophet in those days, how did this little lady, being full of God's love and respect, have made this prophet a little chamber to stay in as he came by? And when her baby died, she laid it up on his bed and saddled a mule and took off to the mount to find the prophet. How did his little Jewish eyes would sparkle? As his mother told him this story of how the great prophet Elijah would come there and walk up and down the floor until he was anointed 
with the Spirit of God and then laid his body up on the little dead baby and it sneezed seven times and restored back to life. Oh, what a day! How he loved it! And he would think, that's right. Oh, if I could have only have lived to see and live in the day that that great prophet lived, I would have been as a Shunammite woman was. I would have held on to him until I received my sight. But oh, the priest tells me that the days of miracles is past. And there's no such things as miracles anymore. Then he thought, you know, right where I'm sitting now, not a hundred yards from where I'm sitting, that great mighty prophet Elijah, with his arms around Elisha, came down this road arm and arm. The days of miracles were past. I don't imagine Barnabas said, if they would walk down this road now, I'd get in the middle of that road and scream to those men until they come and laid their hands upon me and prayed a prayer of faith and I would receive my sign. But the heartbreaking part was that they had told him that them days were gone. Then in his mind he thought this, Elijah may be gone, Elisha may be gone, but God isn't gone. And I can see a little breeze as it blew through the leaves and he turned himself again to get into the sun. He started a new story in his mind. Then he thought just a little piece from where he was standing. The mighty Joshua crossed the Jordan with Israel in full arm and the Jordan rolled back in the month of April when the high waters was up. Looked like God put away until the waters was low. But God waited until the waters was high. And sometimes that's the way it is in our experience. God Let's us get into a place to where we're hopeless. That's when he moves in to show you that he loves you. And as God engineering the whole journey, and as he moved in and moved the waters back, and Israel passed right over on dry land. Oh, he thought, surely... If Jehovah God was that great in that day, that could move back to Jordan to let the people come over, surely he hasn't deceased. But I'm told by my church that the days of miracles are past. And there's no need of trying to think about it. It will not be no more until Messiah cometh. And then as he sat there, he could think also of not a hundred yards from where he was sitting. This great mighty Joshua, a servant of the Lord, was walking one day for a little afternoon stroll. And as he walked, he saw a man standing with his sword drawn. And Joshua drew his sword and went for him. And he stopped and said, Are you for us? Are you for the enemy? And this great mighty warrior was standing and he said, Nay, but I am the captain of the host of the Lord. That captain had stood within a hundred yards from where he was sitting. And little did he know, but that same captain of the host of the Lord was not a hundred yards away at the same time. And that's the way it is tonight, friends. Many try to 
preach Christ as a baby in the cradle. Some try to preach him as a man on the cross. But that same captain of the host of the Lord has raised from the dead and is in this building tonight in the same power and splendor. And as we set as he did in the days gone by, if our meditations has taken off of our church affiliation, if our meditation is taken off of our work, or off of the superstitions that we have in our mind, and place them upon him and his presence, he'll come and do the same thing tonight that he did for Brian Barnabas on that day. If we'll just do it. If we'll just keep our mind stayed on him. And notice, it's when we're thinking on those things. The Bible says, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things. Now, I want to ask you a question. What good does it do us to come to church and sit in the meeting and ponder and may be discouraged because we didn't get a prayer card? Or maybe be discouraged because of some ill thing a neighbor did. Or discouraged about one little matter or the other. That keeps Christ away from you. It's when you're thinking on Him. It's when the disciples, after the resurrection, was going down the road to Emmaus. As they were speaking about Him, that's when he appeared to them. We got our minds on too many things of the world. If we would throw those things off our mind and think about him and his soon coming, there would be more revelations and power in the church. But we keep thinking about the things. What am I going to do tomorrow? What will I do next week? Will I hold my job? Will this be... All those things are in the hands of God. Think on Christ. And as blind Barney Mayus sitting by this gate and blind, poor, afflicted man, no hope, but he was thinking the right kind of thoughts. Well, I can imagine as I see him say, Oh, if I only could know that that same great captain was standing out there at a hundred yards now. I could raise my voice and he would hear me and he would heal me. And just about the time that he was thinking like that, a little children began to run by and here come a noise along. People saying one thing and another. Some of them hollered, Hosanna! The others hollered, Say, you that raised the dead, you that raised Lazarus from the dead. And blind Barnabas' ears caught that. That was the sound of a priest. Say, you holy roar, you that raised Lazarus from the dead. We got a whole graveyard full of them up here. Come up and raise some of ours. That's the same mock and scoff that they give him today. That old critical spirit don't die. It will sometime. But it's still alive tonight and it can work to man. Come and raise these from the dead up here. We'll believe you. How could he do anything in a mess like that? They were in different opinions. After a while, I can hear him say, Who is it that's passing by? And he couldn't get no consideration. No one seemed to want to help him. And then we hear another one speak up and say, This is that fanatic that's going around healing the people. 
that struck fire. Any man that's got any God about him, as soon as he hears of God doing something that strikes in his heart, it's bound to anchor. What did you say? And a kind little lady stepped down and said, Sir, have you not heard of Jesus of Nazareth? No. Who is Jesus of Nazareth? Well, that's that Galilean prophet. That he does great miracles and signs. Could that be the Messiah? Well, some people think it is. You can draw your opinion, listen to the crowd. One said one thing and one another. Well, usually where Jesus is around, you get that type of a crowd. One says one thing and one another. Because every word that the sons of God gather, the devil sets in the midst of them. They've always done it. And you get that different crowd, one saying one thing and one another. Bartimaeus, those great scriptures that he had had in his mind and in his heart since he was a little boy, every one of them seemed to press right up to him. Oh, when a man's in need, if you feel your need of Christ tonight, Everything you ever heard about him will come right forward. I stood by a man some time ago who was dying. An accident. And then I talked to him. He was slowly passing away. And I told him, I said, if you ever prayed, you better pray now. I started to turn away. He said, don't leave me. Maybe two hours before then, he had run me away. But he had a need. Brother, when men have need, they'll seek God. They sure will. He had a need. A chaplain told me some time ago in the army that he was called into a tent one night and a great officer had been machine gunned across him. The bullets had cut him through. And he was dying. And someone had told him to go over there. And he said to the man, he said, Sir, are you a Christian? He said, I once was. He said, How long have you been backslidden? He said, Well, I don't know. He said, You once knew Christ? He said, Yes, sir. He said, Where did you leave him? He was struggling and the blood filling up in his lungs. And he said, You had better think fast. He said, what can I do? He said, go right back to where you left him and begin right there. That's where you'll find him is where you left him. And he laid there a moment as he was struggling and a smile come across his face. He said, now I remember. He said, start from right there, sir. He said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And when he said that, he lifted his hands and smiled and went out to meet God. Bring up a child in the way that should go. Barney Mess. At this time, all those teachings as Jehovah being the mighty deliverer sprung to him. What was it? He had need. And he rose to his feet and he screamed, Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now from where he was sitting to the street, was probably at 40 or 50 yards. And all that great crowd around, some of them throwing over right fruit at him and some yelling this and some yelling that. You know, Jesus physically did not hear him. Someone said, oh, shut up. But do you know what you're doing? You must be excited. 
You must be beside yourself. Keep still. And the world has always tried to keep the real believers still. But that didn't stop Barney Mavis. He knew his child's teaching that Jehovah was the deliverer. And if this person was the Messiah, he had a right for help. And I say the same thing tonight. If Jesus is the Son of God, has raised from the dead the same yesterday, today, and forever, we've got a right to ask for help. For well, he said, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe, you receive it, and you shall have it. We've got a right to ask for it. That's the teachings of the Bible. We have a right to. Jesus, with his head back, walking on, and the priest screaming at him, making fun of him, others crying Hosanna. But did you notice the whole burden of all the world rested upon him? Calvary, dark hours in Gethsemane laid before him. No, as he went, he never noticed their scoffing. You know, when someone says something evil about you and you want to take it up and get angry about it, that shows that you haven't went quite deep enough yet with God. Big men don't do those things. That's what made him God to me. He was big. He didn't have to notice their little scoffing. He had a purpose. He had a work to do, and that was to fulfill what God had sent him to do. And he was determined to do it. He didn't care what anyone said. And I say this with all the respect that I have. I've been offered great positions in churches if I forget about divine healing. And a good salary. A fine home. But... God sent me to pray for his sick children. And it makes no difference what anyone says. i got a commission to do. And they can say, holy, roly, or whatever they wish. I've got a commission to do. And you've got a commission to do. And everyone that's born to the Spirit of God has got a commission to do. No make any difference what the world says. And you don't notice their scoffs. He had something on his heart. He was going to Calvary. The decisions had to be made. And as he walked down the street and the people throwing things at him and screaming, now we know that his voice, among all the thousands of voices screaming, this poor old spindly ragged beggar way over to the side of the gate, Jesus could have not heard his voice. But he had a sincere heart. He had the same thing in him that the woman had touched his garment. And as I can notice him, as he said, oh, he's passing by. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. I can hear you say, God, don't let him pass me by. And about that time, Jesus stopped, turned and looked around just as he did with the woman who touched his garment. His voice perhaps never touched him, but his faith touched him. That's the kind of a touch that Jesus wants to feel from this church tonight. Not our voice, but our faith. We might scream to the top of our voice. That wouldn't touch him. It's our faith that reaches out and touches him. That's what he's looking for tonight, friend. It's somebody who has faith. And Jesus stopped. He turned around. Said, bring him here. Thy faith has made thee whole. Was the voice that come back. Thy faith has 
save thee. Now I can see that blind beggar as he stood there after Jesus had pronounced that to him. As he wondering what would what had happened, a little cool feeling perhaps went to his body. And he began to look. And he seen his hands. And he knew then that the God of Elijah, that the God of Moses, that the great captain of the host of the Lord who stood just out the gate was on earth again. It was a sign. And he went down the street glorifying God. I say to you tonight, friends, that same captain of the Lord's host is in this building tonight. And your faith can stop him. Just think no matter what the burden is, all the sins of the world rest upon him. All the healing of the world rests upon him. And watch you say, well, I'm just a little housewife. I'm, no matter who you are, Jesus is all that on his mind. We would say tonight, oh, don't trouble me. I've got too much to think about. And look at all the celebrities standing around. But that one poor little insignificant blind beggar had faith enough to stop him in his journey to Calvary. And turned around and told him, your faith has saved you. That same Jesus can, will come from glory tonight to anybody that has a need. Do you believe it? Let us pray. Our most glorious and kind Heavenly Father, it is indeed with grateful hearts that we approach Thee now. Just as this revival is just beginning to start, souls coming to the altar, the sick are being healed, and the praises of God have begun to set upon the lips of the saints. The talk from neighbor to neighbor. Oh God, will you come tonight to us? And may there be many sitting here tonight that will stop you, Lord, and receive their healing. Grant it, Lord. May you show yourself alive tonight. Although our teaching today tells us many of us that the days of miracles are past. But we read in the Bible that Jesus the Lord said, A little while and the world will see me no more, yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. And the things that you did then would you do until you come again. O oh Christ, we pray tonight in this dying world at the end of the age that you will Bless us tonight with your presence and do again tonight and prove to this congregation as you did to blind Barnabas and many long ago that you're still on earth and the world was made by you and you hold it all in the power of your hand. Grant it, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, on these little few broken words, it was said for this purpose, that your faith would rest solemnly upon the finished work of the Lord Jesus. And I'm trusting to God that you will receive that what you're seeking for tonight. And now, may his blessings rest with you. We're going to call a prayer line, and pray for some of the sick. Now, I am trying to get this to the people. I can certainly, could call a hundred or two people up here, pass them through laying hands up on them. That would be wonderful. That's scripture. But being that there's so many of the brethren in the field who does that, and by the grace of God, as a little baby boy, God gave a gift 
It's a gift to foresee or foretell or to see things that should come and has been. If you there's two things that I know, if this would be my last sermon tonight, there's two things that I know and there's two things I believe. Now there's two things over here I believe, there's two things here I know. I watch the sap in the tree. How when winter time comes, that sap goes down into the roots of the tree and stays there all through the winter. Now that sap has no intelligence of its own to drive it down into them tree roots. I see a flower and a frost will strike it, young or old. It bows its little head. A little black seed drops out of it and uh, have a funeral procession. The fall rains come and bury the little seed. The winter comes in and freezes and the pulp runs out of it. It's all gone as far as the world knows. No science could ever find anything remains of the seed. But just let the warm sun begin to shine in the springtime and that little seed will live again. That flower will come back again. Now it has no intelligence. It has no power of its own. There's something that brings it forth again. That's what I know. I believe that who does that is that one in the Bible that's called Jehovah God. That's what I believe. Then I know and believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ met every requirement of the Jewish Messiah of the Old Testament. I believe he was the one of Isaiah 9, 6 was speaking of. I believe he was the one that Moses spoke of. All the prophets give witness to. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of Jehovah God. That God overshadowed Mary, created a blood cell in her, and she brought forth the son, Christ Jesus. God came and dwelt in this body, reconciling the world to himself. I believe that this Jesus is the Son of Jehovah God. There's two things I believe. There's two things I know, that is how the sap goes and comes in life, perpetual life. Then I know this, that since I was a little baby boy, the first thing I can remember was a vision, something speaking to me. I'm 47. I have seen thousands of the visions by the grace of God. And I have never at one time ever seen it wrong. Then I read back in the Bible and I see Joseph, many others in the Bible, that how that spirit lived back in the Old Testament on man. I see how it lived in the New Testament. How Joseph would see visions, and the prophets would see visions, and how he would interpret dreams and the spirit life of the prophets. I see it over on Paul, Peter, many of the others of the New Testament. And I believe that these two things that I know are the products of these two things I believe. God has sent Christ to the world. He died for sinners and he lives today with his people, with his nature. No grass can live, no tree can live, no flower can bloom. And we would not even be here if it wasn't for God. And I believe that these visions are associated with him by his own sovereign will to send gifts to the world that the people might be without an excuse at the day of judgment. And if I'm faithful to him, in the face of critics, whatever it might be, and be as faithful as I know how to be to his word and to the calling, I believe that someday I'll see him in peace. And I want to see, standing with me, literally millions of people that I'd be instrumental in winning them to Christ. And oh, my dear friends, Seeing that life is so short, I often wonder where it's all gone to. 
I can remember about 22 years ago, out here at Wickenburg, Arizona, on a cattle ranch. The first time I ever come to Arizona. Just a boy. And here I am, a middle-aged man. Seems to me like that was last year. We were riding out that way today. Oh, it's changed so. There's something's happened. But there's one thing that I do know. That some glorious day when he comes, he'll call me, even if I'm in the dust of the earth, he'll call me if I'm faithful. Now to my ministry and to the Lord sending me, tonight I want to be faithful and pray for the people. Now, when they come to the platform, it's not so much whether I touch you. Now in Africa, India, Brother Oregon Black is on the platform tonight. He was just with me down in Drake, Switzerland, where there was only an average of 10,000 every night come to Christ. Known up to Karlsruhe, Germany, likewise. In Africa, I saw 30,000 raw heathens accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior at one meeting, and 25,000 estimated healed at one prayer when there had been about three people on the platform. When they seen the Word and seen it made real before the people, that settled it. They believed it. They picked up seven truckloads of stretchers, old wheelchairs, and clubs, and things that they had walked on after one prayer had been made for the people. What was it? What's a massive? They touched him like Brian Barnabas did with one accord. Now, let's do that tonight. Let's believe that tonight. Let's have faith in that tonight. You're sick if you are. I come to help you. If I was a doctor, I'd try to do everything I could to help you. If it were a medical science. Or maybe the doctors don't give you up. Maybe you're beyond doctor's help. But you're not beyond hope. I'm trying to tell you there is another doctor who is the doctor of doctors who made your mortal body. And he loves you. And he's made a, a provision for you. And he's only asked you to accept it and believe it. I want you to do it while we call the prayer line. What was it called? You used what we, we called from 50 last night, didn't you? Amen. Let's call from 35 then tonight. That'll be breaking it between the two nights. You, you, 35, who has that prayer card? Would you raise your hand look on your prayer card? We just do like that so there will not be a scrambling, I want number one prayer card, I've got to have two. Uh, uh, see, we do that, we just mix them all up. And when the bells give them out, they take them prayer cards before you, or the instructor to do it, to mix them all up together, you want one of your you see? And they never know where they're at. And no one knows where the line's going to start from. We just come here and wherever I feel led, I start it tonight, then. But that has nothing to do with the people being here. All right? Is that here in the building? You, 35. All right? 36. Would you raise your hand if you can? Look at your prayer cards and see those who can't get up and so forth. 36. You have you, 36? All right, over here. 37, look closely, all right, 38, could you raise your hand, 38 please, you have it, 39, 40, who has you, 40, would you raise your hand, do you have you, 40 lady, what, 40, 41, All right, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, good, 48, 48, did I miss it up? I see a little girl raised up in the bottom. 48, 49, 
Read everything, 49, did I get it? 50? Well, then, in the prayer line, friends, we must have everything just reverent, see? We are approaching God. How many understand that? Oh, I just, God is in this holy temple. Let the world be silent, see? We must come with reverence, with respect. Now, I've got some things next week that the Lord willing. We want to try to teach on them. The reason that the Spirit is not operating in the church the way it is among these people is because of, a lot of it, because of irreverence. They don't respect it. You've got to respect anything God stands. See? No matter what it is, you've got to respect it to get the good from it. Look there. Any time that you respect her, look at Martha. When she went out to meet the Lord Jesus at the death of her brother, she said, Lord, if I would have been here, my brother would not died. She still respected him, though he refused to come to her. I said, even now, whatever you ask God, God will do it. <laughs> See, there she was. She hadn't lost her faith in him, and she respected him. Peter and John passed through the gate called Beautiful said, look on us. In other words, give heed. Quieten yourself and look towards us. All through the Bible, it was respects. Now let's give God respects tonight. And that's everyone. Now we're trying to get out just as quick as we can. And before we start, I want to pray for these here in the handkerchiefs on the platform. Will you pray with me? Now I want you to pray. Now I'm not the only one in this meeting. I'm just one. I'm one of you. We're all together in this meeting. See? And you help me pray now as we pray for these sick people that these handkerchiefs represent. Kind Heavenly Father, in the days gone by, we're taught in the Bible that they're taken from the body of St. Paul, handkerchiefs and aprons. They were sent to the sick and the afflicted, so many he couldn't even reach to them. And unclean spirits went out of the people. Diseases were healed. Now we realize that we're not St. Paul, but we know that you're still Jesus, and you love your people. And I pray that every handkerchief that's in this little box that'll touch the sick, may they be healed in commemoration of God's holy word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Brown. Oh, now is the time. I'll be, keep your babies near you. There's epilepsy in here tonight. See? And that's the thing. I think it was Phoenix. No, no I beg your pardon, it's Jonesboro. Or something happened on that. So now be just as reverent as you can. Just keep reverent. Believe with all your heart. God will surely grant you your request. Now, then if, uh, if there's something that you... Believe, and you see something maybe that you do not believe, if you'll just sit quiet just for a few moments. How many in here now I want to ask you that has not prayer cards? You do not have prayer cards, but you believe that God will heal you. I want to see your hands everywhere. Now, do you think it would be in the kind Heavenly Father to do something for one person and not do it for another? Your healing now is not based upon your salvation. It's based upon the merits of your faith. You believe that? It's on your faith. Now, I want you to watch this way. And be reverent. If there's any doubt in your mind, get it out. God will never deal with a person that's irreverent. Just remember that. He'll only deal with those who, as my sermon said tonight, are meditating on His Word and His goodness. Now, you believe. And now, you look this away. You just keep, just keep as quiet as possible and pray. And say this, if you have having a prayer card, Lord, touch me tonight. Let me, by my faith, touch you like blind Barnabas did. And if you'll do that and he doesn't turn and tell you just as he did Barnabas, then I'm a false prophet. 
That's a big statement, isn't it? And you remember, by the grace of God, I've been in personal contact with better than 10 million people. See? So I, I, I weigh my words. But I know who I have believed. I know what his word says. I know that he's God, and he can't fail. That's the reason I believe him. Now, this is going to be the lady, the lady that comes. All right. Now, I want you to do this for me. I want you to look this way and believe with all your heart. Now, the story that I told you, Jesus has raised from the dead. And now, look, you can touch him by the feeling of your infirmities. Now, if you want to get well for something, for the glory of God, say, Lord, I want to be healed, and I'll serve you. I'll turn my life to you. Now, here, how many in here knows that I don't know you and know what's wrong with you? Raise your hand. Everybody prayer line, anything else that knows? See? All right. Then I don't. But how many knows that if Jesus was standing here tonight and you asked him to heal you, that he would tell you that he's already done it. How many would know that? That's right. Then the only thing he can do is to do something to try to get you to believe him. Is that right? Now, he could tell you like he did. Well, this is a case of woman here first. We'll just talk to her. Now, how many would like to live in Bible days? Let's see your hands. Back when Jesus was here. Sure we would. Then if Jesus is alive, is he still here? Then it's still Bible days. Then if he is the same, he's the same in principle, power, and all. All but a corporal body. Now, here stands a woman and not a man. I guess we're strangers to each other, lady. We are. We do not know each other. Now, here's a woman that's a stranger to me. You all may know her. Many of you may know her. Is there anybody out there who knows the woman? Raise up your hand. Anybody in the meetings? Yeah, I see. Yeah, that's right. All right. Now, you know her. I don't. But then for me to know anything of her, why, it's impossible. And the only way I could do it would be because that Christ would permit it to be done. Is that right? Now, what if he was standing here before the woman? And he would, uh, if she wants healing for herself or whatever she wants, he would tell her that he died on Calvary to give her her desire. His life has done, been brought, shed his blood, shed and everything, and the Holy Spirit is here to give her her desire. Now, if the Lord Jesus will do right here tonight in this same platform as he did at the well of Samaria, talk to that woman till he found where her trouble was and told her what her trouble was, and she said that was the sign of the Messiah. How many knows that's the truth in the Bible? St. John, the fourth chapter. Well, then, if he will return, he's the vine. Now, we're the branches now. And if he will return and do the same thing to this woman, will all of you believe him with all your heart? Looky here. I don't believe in swearing. The Bible said not swear by heaven or by the earth or nothing. But with this Bible in my hand, and God my judge, as far as I know, this is the first time in my life I ever seen the woman. And perhaps maybe her first time ever seeing me, or either less she's seen me from the audience. Is that about right? From the audience. The first time you've ever seen me. This is the first time the woman's ever seen me. All right. Now, if I can talk to her and God will come back and do through his church tonight the same thing he did then, it ought to settle it forever for every one of you. Is that right? It ought to settle it forever. Now, sister, uh, just a word to say to you in the order that after being preaching and tired as I am, I just here to try to help you. And without me knowing anything of you, but surely you come here for some cause. And if God will let me know, you be the judge, if God will let me know what you're here for, 
Will you believe him and will believe that he's going to give you what you come for? The audience has done said they would. Now, I want to ask you something. Just a second ago, a different feeling come to you that you know that something is present here beside your brother. A real sweet, humble feeling come to you. Why? I saw that light come right down over you. And that's what it is. How many saw the picture of that? Let's see your hand. I think they got some here. They should have. It's in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Copyrighted. Now, that's what it is. God's... Oh, yeah, there the lady has one right there. The angel of the Lord who led the children of Israel, Jesus Christ, the angel of the covenant, that struck that lady just now. She be witness. Something come to her as she's just witnessed. Such a feeling. It even brought tears to your eyes. Now that's him. And now, if you believe that, then it will work. Now if the audience can still hear my voice, the woman seems to be leaving me. And I see her all upset about something. She's real extremely nervous. That is the truth. Raise your hand if that's true. Now, just a moment. You are... You've got something wrong physically with you, which is in your back. You've got a spine trouble that's bothering you. That's dust saith the law. That is true. Now, do you believe? There's the lady. Some power did that. Now, really, right now, I don't know what I said to the woman. You heard somebody speaking, but that wasn't me. I don't know her. Ever what said was the truth. That's something else talking through you. You get what I mean? Now, to you ministers... Don't you believe it's Christ speaking through you when you're preaching the Word? Sure, well, that's, that ought to be strange to you. It's Christ speaking right back through another type of gift, a prophetic gift. Now, here the lady stands here. Whatever was told her is the truth. Now, that's the same picture that there was at the well of Samaria. How many believe that's the truth? All right then that proves that he's alive. Our religion is not in vain. The Christian religion is the only one who can prove that their founder is alive. And that's Jesus. Now, to heal the woman, if that's what she needs, I couldn't do it. But do you believe that you will receive what you ask for? You'll believe it? Knowing that you believe that you receive it. Now, what... Just a moment. Somebody appeared in a vision by the side of the woman. She isn't exactly satisfied yet. There's something else that she's got on her heart. For the Holy Spirit just spoke to me that that's so. Isn't it right? And I see somebody in a uniform. It's your son. You're praying for him, and he's unsaved. That's right. That's right. Raise up your hand. Ah, look at that. Do you believe now with all your heart? Let us pray. Oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, be merciful to this audience and myself tonight, and shed forth the Holy Spirit that will drive every gloomy doubt out of the building. And may the power of God be preeminent tonight and have the initiative. And may it drive away every doubt and skeptic. And may he heal all that's sick and needy tonight. Bless this dear woman and give to her everything that's in her heart. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, sister.
May he grant it. Now, as far as that is concerned, it's a settled fact. Is that right? Jesus said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. What are you thinking, little Spanish man sitting out there with that asthma sitting on the end of the seat? You believe that Jesus Christ make you well? Well, you're healed then. Amen. <laughs> now the man is 30 or 40 feet from me. Well, let me ask you something. And you listen to the man. The man was sitting there within his heart saying, I believe it. That's the truth. He was witnessing that this was the truth and believing that God would heal him. Isn't that right, sir? The little spe- Raise your hand. Is that right? Now, did Jesus perceive their thoughts? Is that right? Did the woman touch his garment? Did Brian Bartimaeus touch him? That man touched him. And he is alive here tonight. He's right here now. Oh, why can we be so dense? Oh, we have just been drugged through this and drugged through that and drugged through everything until, honestly, poor little people can't understand what to believe. There's been so many things taking place. Just this saying this, that Dr. So-and-so says this, and Dr. So-and-so says that, and this church says this, and this other says that, that people don't even know what to believe. But, brother, the Bible is confirmed, and it is the truth. Amen. Now I believe, a little lady, bless your heart. And your face, your favor, my mother. And she wears little glasses like that. And if I could do anything for you, God in heaven knows I would do it, sister. But I, I can't because I, I'm just a man. But if God will tell me what you come here for, what you want to ask Him. And God will let me know what you want to ask Him. Will you believe that He will give you what you're asking for? May God grant it. You're here to ask Him to take a tumor from you. That's right. If God will tell me where that tumor is, will you make you a little more faith? It's on your back. Called skin tumor. That's what he said. <laughs> All right. Believe it now and be healed. In Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen. God bless you, sister. And make you every whip hope. Trying to believe, brother. If you keep that up, he'll heal you. Now, I just don't think that you're an impossible case. You'd have had it sitting right here the night. And the light followed you plumb down the aisle and had you call back, but the mix up come. Keep believing. When I see it, I'll tell you. How do you do, sir? Do you believe on the Lord Jesus with all your heart? Do you believe that He has raised from the dead and come back in the church in spirit form called the Holy Ghost? And through this Holy Spirit, which the world can't kill it, they can grieve it, but He can't kill it. When He was in a human body, they could kill that. And they did. They got away with Him. But they can't kill the Spirit. It's immortal. And God will do His work. He's determined to do it. And now, if God will tell me what you're here to ask me about, will you believe it with all your heart?
That's right, sir. Bow your head. Headaches, throat trouble. Little Mexican brother, if you believe with all your heart, you can ask what you you believe it. The little Mexican boy sitting right there next to you, sir, is where it happened. That's the, oh you right there, yes, sir. All right, it's over now. You can go home and be made well. God bless you. Now, what did that? I seen here something standing here. And the man was holding to his throat the vision. And I seen this man was in Spanish. And I just followed the leading of the Spirit. I looked and there hung the light hanging right over the man. Then the vision broke. There it is. Now, the Bible said in the Hebrew chapter, or the Hebrew letter, that he's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? Well, what happened to that man? He never touched me, but he touched something. And the Bible said that he was a high priest. Now, he used to make intercessions upon his confession now. Is that right? Isn't he wonderful? Now the man here. Now, do you believe, sir, you say? I see there's been something, a doctor associated in this case. It was uh, something behind your left ear on your neck. It was a wart. And he burned it off. It come back as a growth. Exactly right. <laughs> it hid from me. I couldn't see it because you've been that way. How would I know what happened? You believe with all your heart that God will make you well? Heal your wife too and make her well? Arthritis and a throat trouble? That's right, isn't it? All right, sir. And you believe with all your heart. Yes, I do. Well, Mr. Ernest Wells, you can go be healed. <laughs> I've never seen him alive. No tear, nothing. But that's true, isn't it? That's my name, Ernest Wells. That's Go right ahead now. The same God that knows who Peter was, who his daddy was, and all about him, knows you. Go and be well. In Christ's name. You believe him? Are you setting him with all your heart? Are you having faith? How do you do, lady? Of course, we're strangers to each other. I, I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. We're just perfectly total strangers. Got heart trouble, don't you, lady? And female trouble. The young lady sitting there. That's the little boy sitting next to you, is your son. You believe me to be God's prophet? You believe that God would heal him of asthma, make him well? Now, the lady sitting next to you is your mother. There's three generations sitting there. And you have trouble with your leg, don't you, lady? All right, put your hands... Sonny, you put your hands on mother and grandmother. Oh, kind Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, may this audience be conscious, Lord, that it's you, these people sitting here. Oh, it's the living Lord Jesus. Grant, Lord, their healing. For the glory of God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yes, it's true. Your faith is touching out in there. Right now, it's just everywhere. But getting through that crowd, that's the reason why I get them here before me. It's much better. See, getting to the place.
there's a certain lady looking at me, fixing to have a, or supposed to have an operation for stomach ulcer. But if they'd bleed with all your heart, sister, you wouldn't have to have it. That's right. You believe with all your heart? You believe Jesus will make you well? You touched something, didn't you? It wasn't, it wasn't me, because I don't know you. You believe now. Lady? You're, you got trouble in your side. That's right. But that never hit the spot when I said that. It wasn't the main thing that you want me to pray for. But that is true. But if God will tell me what you want me to pray for, then will you believe and accept it? It's for your husband. And he's in the hospital. And up for a prostrate operation. Now do you believe me? Then, Lord God, give to her the desire of her heart. I pray in Christ's name. God bless you, sister. Such wonderful faith. If you could just get through that blackness. I wish I could explain this. I know... People here in these tourist towns are victims of everything, see. But if I could only let you know that I wasn't a fanatic, and you would see that Christ is proving that to you, I'm trying to put you on the Word. Go to any church you want to, but be a Christian and believe God. What your little difference is, that doesn't matter. If that little gloom, that little shadow that I look at of darkness in the room... If that would only leave here, some way we could get that away from here, there wouldn't be a feeble person in the building in one minute from now. You believe? You should. You just been healed. That was down in the audience. Some kind of a spell that had come on you. That's right. You're here for somebody else. A hospital case. Something in the stomach like pancreas. They can't even operate. Well, go take that handsome Mrs. Adkins and tell her if she can believe the Lord will make her well. Amen. <laughs> God grant it. Are you believing? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Lady, if you'd believe God, you wouldn't have to operate on. That tumor would go away without your operation. You believe it? All right. Go and receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right. Bring the next patient. Now, somebody's thinking I'm reading the people's mind, but you're wrong. Here. Lay your hand on mine, lady. That's just the point of contact. I'll look this way. You be the judge. If God will tell me looking this way, not looking at your face or as someone saying it's telepathy, would, if God will explain to me and tell me what you're here to be prayed for, will you accept it if you will raise your hand off of mine? I'll put it back. You could go eat your supper now. Your stomach trouble would be gone. <laughs> Now, you, anybody mentally right knows that that's not telepathy. It's the Lord Jesus. Have faith in God. And now, lady, if you'd believe with all your heart, the asthmatic condition would leave you and you'd be well. Do you believe it? All right, then go and believe with all your heart. Amen. That's, all right. Heart trouble will leave you if you'd believe. Will you do it? Believe that God will make you well? Then in Christ's name may you be healed. Amen. Have faith. Trouble's in your back. But God can heal kidney trouble or anything. You believe that? Amen. Then go and receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, do you love him? How many loves him with all your heart? Oh, this could go for hours. But why not 
shall us be healed. The presence of the Lord is here to heal the sick. Do you believe it? How many is convinced that Christ Jesus is here? What if I told you, lady, as well? Would you believe me? Uh, certainly. Well, go, well, God bless you. Go and be made you, well. You hey. heal me once. I remember. God bless you, sister. Let's say praise the Lord. How many believes that the Lord Jesus is here? Let's just bow our heads just a moment. Just stay right where you are. We pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we realize that these things are for signs. For one thing, the greatest sign that I could place this gift to tonight is is to show forth that that you're soon coming. These things never happen. Down to the age since Jesus was here on earth and the apostles until this age. Why is it? It's the end of time. We see rockets in the air. Day after day, we see the handwriting on the wall. And here you are tonight, right here in this little wrestling arena, brought yourself from heaven here to comb this audience, to show that you're alive. Oh, God. How our cold and indifferent hearts is. We pray that you will soften us up tonight. That the people that here can see that you're present. And while your anointing is here, and while you have your servant anointed, I pray, God, that you'll save every sinner in the building. Grant it for Jesus' sake. And while we have our heads bowed, to you here who is not right with God, I wonder if you would believe in my prayers and would come here tonight and stand here and let me put my hand on you now while the anointing of the Holy Spirit is in the building and offer prayer for you and you accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Will you come? I invite you. Would you raise your hand then and say, Brother Brandon, pray for me. God bless you there, sinner friend. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you up in the balconies. That's right. Up in the side. Won't you come right here just a moment? Come here. If you believe me, come here. God will take every sin stain away. And make you as white as snow. Why we stop this prayer line just a minute? The Holy Spirit here. Come here, call, brother. God bless you. Come here, my brother. Stand right here, my brother. Stand right here, my brother. God bless you. Come here, my dear one. Stand right here, my brother. Come right down. That's right, lady. You don't raise your hands back or raise right up. Come here. Come down out of the balcony. We wait for you. I want you to come right here. Right here. God bless you, sister. Come right down here. Oh, God be merciful to you, sister. Come right here, brother. That's good. God bless you, young man. Convince that the Lord Jesus is here. God bless you, my brother. Stand right here. God bless you, young man. You are a great gallant move. Stand right here, sonny boy. God bless you, sister. And stand right here just a moment. Jesus Christ, God bless you. I certainly will. God bless you, sister. Come here, Spanish sister. God be with you, sister dear. Stand right here. That's right. God bless you, my brother. Stand right here. That's good. Come down now and make your way on down to the altar. This is the, the Holy Spirit. If you believe, come here, young lady. God bless you, sister. Come out right up here just a little closer. I believe that God in His Holy Spirit. God bless you, sir. God be merciful. You stand right here just a minute. You. Come right here, sister dear. God be merciful to you, sister. Come right in here, my sister. God bless you. I, I just know that God bless you, sister dear. Well, God bless you. Come here, sister. God bless you, sister. All right. Come right down in here, sister. Let these ladies in here now that's trying to come to get in. They won't come in for their salvation. God bless you, sister dear. God bless you, sister. God bless you, my brother. Stand right here. Come right in here, brother. Won't you stand right here just a moment? Come right in here, my brother. 
I just want to shake your hand. You say, that do any good? Certainly it will. God bless you, brother dear. Come right in here, my Spanish brother, right in here. Come around, little boy, right here. We're only happy to have each one of you here. God bless you, brother. God bless you, my sister. I bring the little boys here. Would you come in, Sonny, up here? Come here, then. Let the little boys... Uh, you just stay right here. Tell the ladies, stay right here. Just a minute. We're going to prayer. God bless you. God bless you, honey boy. That's a real gallant thing. Ladies, you hear the Spanish ladies. Come here just a moment. We are going to have prayer. I want you to stand here a minute. Will there be another one? Let's read it quietly and I'll sing the song. Just as I without one plea, but thy blood was shed for me. playing and you're humming. Wow, much, what a wonderful appropriated time. The Lamb of God right here at the platform, moving out over the audience, doing signs and wonders. Right in the middle of this prayer line, something stopped me. said, Carl, their sinners must come home tonight. Here they are. See? Obedience is better than sacrifice, isn't it? Obedience is the best. And here they are. Would there be others, which it probably is? Every one of you. Come out up here now. We're fixing to pray. Come up here. All ye that need Christ, all ye that are laden and heavy laden. Look, you could be healed. That's true. God has healed you. But brother, you'll get sick again. And you're going to die someday. But this soul that's in you is immoral. Get that right. Get that straightened out first. God bless you, sister dear. Come right on up here close. And the Lord bless you. Now, is there another? Would you come on? Is there more in here? Move right out and come right on down, will you? I'm just waiting. Others are coming just as I am. Come here, young man. God bless you, sonny. Come right down here. Just want to shake your hand, sister. I want to shake this little boy. Stay right here, sonny boy. Come right down, sisters. That's right. Come right down here. Just as I am, let the audience pray. Oh, God, be merciful. God bless you, sister dear. The Lord bless you, dear. The Lord bless you, sister dear. God, be merciful now. I want to just touch this lady's hand. God bless you, sister. Come right down. That's right. God bless you. I'll get right over here at the other end. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. If you're a church member and has never been born again, why don't you come down? Get rid of that one dark blot. That's the blot that'll keep you out of heaven. That's the blot that stands in your way. Why don't you come down? Now, I'm not making much of a strength because I know the Holy Spirit's here. And anybody that's intelligent will know the same thing to see the way he's working. See? But what is it? We get ourselves so cold and so indifferent and away and all mixed up. Oh, we want that thing away. So we're all together, one unit of people, and we're trying to help one another to live forever in heaven together. And the very God of heaven is right here with us now. He's here doing this. Is there more would come while we sing one more time, just as I am without one plea? Will you come now just as we sing? Just as Christians pray, I am without 
one plea, but thy, thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bid me come to Of God I come, I come. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask the ministers, whoever they are, the minister brothers, cooperating pastors, whoever you are, get right around here now. Stand right with us while we go to pray for these people. Your, your workers here now. Very sacred time. Everyone be just as reverent as you can now. Sinner, if you have me sitting with one of these who's getting up, you come right along with them. These souls mean so much. Just move right up around where they're at as close as you can now so we can put hands on them and pray for them. That's right. That's right. Everybody real reverent. Now please be just quiet for a few minutes now. You've come solemnly upon the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, the very living God who's raised from the dead in this year tonight, beyond any shadow of doubt showing what He is, that He is alive forevermore. And you're confessing your faith in Him. Now, Jesus said these words. I'm quoting His words. He that heareth my words and believeth on Him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but pass from death to life. No one can come to me. Jesus said, no, one, no man can come to me except my Father draws him first. It was God that brought you out of your seat and brought you here. No man can come to me except my Father draws him first. And all that comes to me, I'll give him everlasting life and raise him up at the last day. That's the word. That's what God said. Now, he wants to do this. And he's given you life. What a privilege. There's people that got up and went out that I've seen the Spirit of God dealing with may never have another chance. See? That's right. I've seen one certain person sitting to my left that left the night. I don't know, I'm not the judge, but I believe it was the last call. I, 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 the anointing of the Holy Spirit is on me. <laughs> that, that's right, I know what I'm speaking of. Now, we're here for the salvation of souls and for the healing of the sick. Now, I want everyone to bow your head, if you will. I want these here at the altar as they bow their head. I got this woman to pray for. You believe not to believe. Oh, Jesus, thou son of the living God, be merciful to her and Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Go on, God, speak to you. Little mother, will you believe in Jesus? Jesus, 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 all right, it's over now. God bless you. Just your faith in your life. Now, is that you might know that the Holy Spirit's still here, the anointing is here. Now, let's all bow our heads real reverent before him, the maker of heavens and earth. Now, kind Lord Jesus, our merciful Savior, it is indeed with a surrendered heart that we bow in your presence. And these people who are standing here at the altar tonight are those who you have brought up out of the dust of the earth. You put a spirit in them, a spirit of free moral agency, to make a choice to receive life or to refuse life. And tonight, even though after the preaching of the word, then to see your presence come down and you know all things, and you explained all things. 
and you showed them all things, and you showed them their conditions, and then by accepting that they walked up here to the altar reverently, bowing their heads to the dust of the earth where you brought them from, and where if you tarry, they must return. They are sorry for their sins. And I am praying sincerely as, a, as an intercessor, as one who loves them, as a minister of the gospel, who would pray for those who are needy. I pray that you'll expel off of uh, the book every sin that they have committed. May it be gone, and may the great ink remover of the blood of the Lord Jesus clean every page tonight. And may by the blood you write their name indelibly upon the book of life. And may they be saved right now as they are confessing their sins. Thou hast said in your word, He that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Here's little boys, little girls, the middle-aged, the old. They're all alike standing here, knowing that we all come from the earth. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bless them. And as believing that their sins are forgiven, I pray that you'll give them the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the seal of promise. May they now receive it. And may they find a good church home here in Phoenix somewhere, or wherever they're from. May they live long, happy, peaceful lives. And in the last days when Jesus comes, and it may be tomorrow, may they be found worthy under the shed blood to go up in the rapture to meet him. Grant it, Father, in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, I pray for those who are here that's sick, those who are needy, everyone that's sitting in divine presence or standing in whatever position they may be in. May the Holy Ghost just now Speak down into their hearts and say, Can you now believe and accept me as your sin bearer and as your healer? Grant it, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And now, while we have our heads bowed, everyone reverent, I want you to reach over with your hand and lay it on somebody that's sitting next to you. And just start saying, Jesus, heal them. Jesus, make them well. And when you're praying for them, God will heal you. Jesus, make them well. And these, you and I, who have confessed Christ publicly here before this audience, I want you to raise your hands and ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost just now and give you the baptism. And now, as all together, let's raise our hands out to God in one great prayer. Oh God, all sufficient God, be present. I am, not the I was, I am, who is present, alive, and proving yourself. May the Holy Ghost fall in this building just now and baptize every one of these believers into the kingdom of God. And may also every sick person be healed, taken. You are defeated. In Jesus' name, leave the building and come out of the people. Thanks be to God for the victory in the Lord Jesus. I give you praise, blessing, and believe that you receive it. And you shall have it in Christ.